It is October 30th, 2021, one day away from Halloween. So what are some of the conditions that you guys could be anticipating throughout much of the day into particularly trick-or-treating time? Find out more later on in the video. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate. I also go by Hawking Boy and Nate. We will be covering all the United States as well as portions of Canada as well. So if you guys are new to my channel, please be sure to leave a like on the video to try and spread this information with as many people as possible. Subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications as well as share this for friends and family and on social media. Also follow me on social media. Links will be in description down below. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery here. And we've got a lot of stuff that's happening on one third of the United States. The other two thirds are not really too much that's happening. We have this humongous counterclockwise low pressure system that's rotating right over into the eastern half of the United States. This is causing some massive cloudy conditions with some showers and thunderstorms in portions of New England to where you can find a local severe risk or two over there. Otherwise, nothing really too much happening in the central plains as well as areas along the western portions of the United States, which is, with the exception of a surface low pressure that is just off the coast of Northern California, creating some scattered showers and thunderstorms into portions of California and Oregon as well, and the occasional showers and thunderstorms that are over here into portions of the Rockies. If we take a look at the day one convective outlook here for Saturday, you can see there actually is a risk for severe weather up into portions of Cape Cod. So definitely something to watch out for, but the only risk really for you all is the damaging wind risk. There is not a tornado risk and there is not a hail risk within your area. So just watch out for some damaging winds in excess of 58 miles per hour within your area. So now let's take a look at a broader perspective here of what is happening tomorrow for Halloween. I'm going to be showing you all the high temperatures, the precipitation amounts as to whether or not there could be rain possible within your area as well as I'll show you a little bit of the simulated radar here with the weather models. But we're taking a look at the North American model and we're gonna show you all here. Here's the maximum temperatures across some of the areas here of the United States and Canada. You can see, of course, relatively warm across the southern portions of the states with the exception of some areas here in the mid-Atlantic towards the Delmarva Peninsula, as well as some areas up here in New England potentially getting into some of the action, and even some portions here in the Ohio River Valley getting into some of the 50s and upper 60s as a potential for some warmer temperatures. But then you also have this massive cold pooling here into portions of the northern plains as well as into portions of Montana, Idaho, as well as Wyoming as well. And especially up here into portions of the Northwest where there could potentially be some cooler conditions throughout much of your area as this continues to move on through. But if you're near the coastal areas, you guys could potentially crack up to the 60s as a potential for your Halloween evening. So now we're gonna take a look at the total accumulated precipitation. This accounts for both rain and snow if there is any. And we can take a look across much of the United States. There really isn't a whole lot, except for some portions of Oregon as well as California. And then you also have some areas over here near Idaho into Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, extreme southwestern portions of South Dakota, as well as some areas of Colorado as well. And then if we take a look towards the Great Lakes, specifically Michigan, all the way through into northeastern portions of Ohio, particularly Cleveland in that area. You guys could get some of the activity there. The Appalachians, there could be some rainfall in higher elevations. So definitely something to monitor with that. And then the Northeast, definitely getting a lot of rainfall into portions of Ontario as well as even Quebec. So definitely something to watch out with that. And uh, you are expected to get some accumulated rainfall into some of the portions of Ontario as well. So definitely something to watch out for with that. Taking a look at the simulated radar here from the North American model, you can see some scattered showers and thunderstorms are located across the board in the United States, unless if you are in the central to southern plains, as well as into portions of the southwest where you guys could not really get a whole lot of precipitation in your area. But otherwise, the chance for snow is possible up here into the no northern portions of the Rockies. You could get some scattered showers and thunderstorms in Northern California, as well as into portions of Oregon, and then the scattered showers and thunderstorms in the eastern half of the United States as well. We'll play this in from tonight into tomorrow. Of course, the timing is in Eastern Daylight Time, so you're gonna have to 
appropriately translate into your specific periods of time wherever you may live in these areas. But you can see as this heads off into the Sunday afternoon hours, you can see some residual showers that could basically stay in place into portions of the Great Lakes as well as into portions of the Northeast as well. You guys could get a couple of showers and thunderstorms that could reside within your area and definitely something to watch out for that as well as some potential snow over here in the higher elevations near Wyoming and Colorado as well as Nebraska. The potential for that is still there and you guys also have your storm up here into portions of Ontario and Quebec to where that will eventually cool down and eventually turn into more and more snow. Of course, this model cuts off at a specific spot, so I apologize if you can't see the full storm in its actual entirety, but this rain will eventually turn into snow and you guys could potentially get some snowfall amounts up there. So really something interesting to watch out for with that. All right, so now we're going to take a look at it from region to region of the United States and Canada. You thought the video was over. Nope, it is not. Here we go. Let's start out with the Northeast. We're going to work our way east and move our way westward. And so, yeah, let's take a look at the temperatures here. You can see everywhere in these blues, it's indicated as upper 40s into 50s. Anywhere in these yellows is 60s. Anywhere towards the oranges, that's upper 60s into 70s. So portions here, the Northeast heading off into Quebec and Ontario, you guys can expect eh, high 30s at minimum to the 40s and particularly even 50s in some spots. Specifically, if you're near the Great Lakes, that's where you guys are going to start getting your higher temperatures as well as the Ohio River Valley. If you live near the Hudson River, it might be even higher than that. And then, of course, if you live over here towards portions of the Mid-Atlantic, expect 60s to even upper 60s and maybe 70s as well. Portions of New England, 50s to maybe even low 60s as possible for you all. Definitely something to watch out for that, but you guys could also get some precipitation that'll move on through your area. And speaking of precipitation, you can see the total accumulated precipitation, which is both rain and snow. And you can see some areas here in upstate New York heading into Vermont. You could have some areas with almost two inches of accumulated precipitation in that area specifically near the St. Lawrence River. So if you're along those areas, there's multiple populous cities in Canada that have populous areas along that river. So if you live along that river, you guys probably will have some precipitation for your Halloween evening. And then you also have some potential accumulated precipitation across portions of the Northeast and sporadic areas. So just assume that if you live in the Northeast, you guys have a chance for some pre uh, precipitation for your evening. Moving off towards the southeast here, you can see that there is a lot of areas here that are in the 60s to almost even 70s in some spots, except for portions here heading towards the Appalachians. You can see towards the Tennessee areas as well as upper portions of Alabama heading into northern Georgia, as well as near western portions of Virginia and North Carolina. You can see some areas that are in the upper 50s rather than the mid 60s. And then you also have that same area across the board in the Ohio River Valley that could potentially get into the 50s, almost even into the 60s. But then other than that, some of these areas around the Mississippi River expected to get up to the 60s, unless if you're up into St. Louis, into which it'll start to drop off towards the 50s. And then once you live further north of that, even north of the Arkansas-Missouri border, uh, if you're over to places like Springfield, Joplin, heading off north of that, you guys could get into the 40s and maybe, maybe even 50s in some spots. But otherwise, if you're south of that, expect upper 60s into 70s, unless if you're over into Florida, to which some of you guys could even get into the 80s, and maybe even portions of Texas as well could even get into the 80s over in your area. Looking at the total accumulated precipitation for some of these areas as well, of course, there could potentially be some scattered showers and thunderstorms that could move on through into Florida. That's not really too much of a surprise for people who may live down there, but still, otherwise, not really a huge chance for some precipitation unless if you live along the Appalachians, to which then you guys could get some activity, but otherwise, nothing really too major here with the precipitation amounts. So now we're going to be taking a look at the south central portions of the United States. And as I was talking about before, anywhere practically south of the border of Missouri and Arkansas is going to be 60s and 70s. That stays true to areas near Oklahoma City 
It's right around the 50s and almost 60s. So if you're south of Oklahoma City, you guys are going to get some pretty warm temperatures for the most part heading into Texas, where it starts to get almost into the 80s and stuff in some spots. And as you head further and further south into Texas, that'll expect to almost even crawl to the upper 80s, maybe even 90s in some localized areas. But then if you're north of Oklahoma City, expect 50s to even 40s within some spots. Kansas City expected to be 53. Areas near Wichita expected to be around the upper 50s, maybe 57 in some spots. And then areas near Denver, as well as other portions of Colorado, expected to be around the 40s to even 30s in some spots heading off into Nebraska. So really interesting with that. And then even New Mexico, you can see it's kind of hit or miss as to whether or not some areas are in the 50s or 40s. And then other areas in southern amounts that could be in upwards of the 70s. Once again, precipitation is not that huge of an issue unless if you live near the Rockies where I mentioned that you guys could potentially get some snow within your general area. So watch out for that as the potential for some accumulated precipitation is possible up there into portions of Utah as well as Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, the Dakotas. That definitely is possible in your general vicinity. And speaking of that area, we're going to take a look at the north central portions of the United States heading off into the southern portions of the prairies of Canada. You can see how practically much of the area is in the 40s, except for portions of Iowa heading off into northern Missouri and Kansas to where they are actually in the 50s. But 40s and 30s across the board here is anticipated. And it seems as if the closer and closer you get to Wyoming and Montana, it ends up being towards the 30s as well. So if you live over there, the potential for snow, as I mentioned, is possible. But otherwise, if you live near places like, say, Minnesota, you guys are probably going to get into the 40s, unless if you're up into northern portions of Minnesota, to which you guys could potentially get below that into the upper 30s. Once again, precipitation is not that huge of a deal, unless if you are over towards the places that I mentioned before where you guys can get some snow. Or if your place is near Ontario and Manitoba, to which you guys could potentially get some accumulated rainfall or even snow within your general vicinity as well. So definitely something to watch out for in the evening of Halloween to where it could be a little bit drizzly. All right, so now let's take a look at the southwestern portions of the United States. We have a lot of areas that are pretty wildly inconsistent. We have some areas in the 60s, some areas in the 70s near Vegas, some areas in the 80s near the Grand Canyon. Then you also have places like Los Angeles that gets up into the 60s with some areas south of that near San Diego that get into the mid to upper 60s as well. So it's pretty up and down for the most part with some of your temperatures. And then you also have some areas over here in the Bay Area that stay relatively low towards the upper 50s and even into the 60s in some portions. And then the Sierras, of course, the Sierras are going to most likely stay in the colder temperatures, more than likely into the 40s, maybe even 50s in some spots, depending upon the elevation. And then, of course, you can also see up here in Wyoming to where the temperatures are really cool up there and upwards of the 30s, even below freezing in some areas in that regard. Precipitation's not a huge deal, except for if you are in northern portions of California heading over into Oregon. And then you also have some areas over here in Idaho, northern Utah, heading off into portions of Colorado, as well as Wyoming and portions of Nebraska and the Dakotas. So something to watch out for with that. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible across portions of California as well, specifically central California. But other than that, nothing really too major with the amounts of precipitation in your area. And finally, let's take a look at portions of the Northwest, specifically into portions of Washington, Oregon, as well as Montana, Idaho, and British Columbia and Alberta. You can see across the board, if you are over here along the coastline, you guys are expected to stay around the mid to maybe even upper 50s, 40s in some spots if you aren't that too close. And once you start to get further and further inland, you can actually see the temperatures start to deplete a bit with them starting to go back towards the 40s, maybe below freezing in some of these areas along the border of Alberta and BC. But then otherwise, it's going to mainly stay relatively cool for this time of year for you all 50s as a high 
and 30s as a low high if you get what I mean in this instance. In regards to precipitation, as I mentioned, not really a huge threat unless if you're over here in the portions of Oregon as well as into portions of Idaho and maybe even Montana. But you guys can also see this new wave of showers and thunderstorms that are going to be surging on through here pretty soon. And this could potentially create some severe weather for central portions of the United States. So we're definitely gonna have to watch out for that as to how that will continue to progress. And I'll keep you guys updated with that on my channel. So that's gonna be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media, as well as follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. I may not be able to create a video until Tuesday. I'll see if I can create a video tomorrow, but I definitely cannot create a video on Monday. So continue to turn on channel notifications to stay up to date with all the stuff that I do provide. I'm gonna try and keep you guys up to date with what all is happening with the weather. And hopefully you guys can stick around. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone.